In the box here, we have a number of different components. We have a main fuse, the main contactor, an ammeter shunt, a relay and pre-charge resistor, a relay that's designed to keep you from driving off with the charger cord plugged in, and an additional 12 volt fuse box. Let's take a look at each one of these. For starters, you're going to need a main fuse. This is a must have safety device and if for whatever reason too much amperage is going through your system, the fuse will blow and the car will shut down. Now right now I only have a 175 amp fuse in here. That's okay because it's a slow blow fuse, so I still can do higher than 175 amps for brief acceleration, uh, any of that sort of thing, uh, but I just can't uh, consistently go at 175 amps or higher. And remember, during regular use of the car, we want to keep our amperage as low as possible. So when I'm cruising, it's always far less than that. Now over here, the main contactor is a big electromagnetic switch. It has two connections on it for the power going into it. And then on the side, it has two smaller power connections that feed electricity to a coil. The main contactor is the big on-off switch for the car. Essentially how it works is it snaps shut and it connects the main power to your controller. Now for it to snap shut, it uses an electromagnetic coil which is fed by a smaller separate power supply. In this case, 12 volts of electricity from our main car battery up to the contactor. We have power from that wired into the original uh, ignition coil the, uh, the 12 volt side of the original ignition coil on the car. So when we turn it to on, 12 volts comes out there, it comes up to the coil in the main contactor and it snaps shut. Now if you have any other kind of safety equipment on your car, you want that to work as a switch to interrupt or connect that power to the main contactor. For example, sometimes people might rig up to the parking brake switch. So if your parking brake's on, you can't turn the car on, or in an emergency, if you pull the parking brake, it will disconnect the main contactor. Now I am using that for another feature, and that's this other relay that we have over here. Uh, this one is kind of neat because it's designed to take uh, 120 volt AC electricity in to switch 12 volt DC out and it's settable for either normally open or normally close. So the way it's set up is it's spring-loaded that normally it will complete a circuit unless 120 volts AC is supplied to it. Now I've got 120 volts AC out from my charger and since I'm using that duplex electric outlet in the back of the car, it's also very easy to make it so that uh, any time the extension cord is plugged into the charging port, the gas cap on the side of the car, that provides that 120 volts AC power to this relay, and then it pops open, not allowing 12 volts of electricity to make it up to the main contactor. That way, you cannot hop in your car, turn the key on, and drive off with your extension cord plugged in. It'll stop you from doing that. If you ever hop in, turn the key, it doesn't work, go, oh, wait a minute, the extension cord's still plugged in. Now that's really never been a problem for me because the extension cord is on the driver's side, it's bright orange, I really can't miss it. But uh, this would be a particularly attractive feature to have on your vehicle for if you have other people drive your car or if your charging port is on the other side of the vehicle. Now right down here, we have a relay and a pre-charge resistor. Pre-charge resistor is important to have on your car. In the controller, it has capacitors, and capacitors have the ability to suck up electricity very, very quickly. In fact, they can do it so quick that they can actually damage themselves. So you don't want to turn the key and have the main contactor snap shut, instantly supplying all of the power from the batteries to those capacitors and making them explode. So what we need to do is have uh, in line a pre-charge resistor. The pre-charge resistor knocks down the voltage from the battery pack and it allows just a trickle of energy into your controller for a few moments before you close the main contactor. So now you're thinking, great, how many switches do I have on this thing? Well, there's a number of different ways you could do it. You could rig it up to have a, uh, a push button on your dashboard that you press and hold for a few seconds to activate uh, power through the pre-charge resistor to the controller. Now in my car, I'm using the Open Revolt open source controller. 
and it has a lot of neat little features, including that it controls the main contactor for you. So what actually happens when I turn the key on my car, 12 volts of power goes to the controller, turning it on. It boots up, it runs its software, and it knows that after a preset amount of time, it turns on 12 volts out to the main contactor. Now my car happens to beep for six seconds after I put the key in and turn it. So I thought, what the heck, that'd be a good amount of time to rig up the controller to wait for before it turns the main contactor on. That way I hop in, turn the key, beep, 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 and I hear the main contactor snap shut. In that time, the capacitors in the controller are nicely charged up and we're ready to drive. Also in this box is a shunt for the ammeter. All a shunt is, is a calibrated conductor that all the power flows through. So you can see we've got the big connections on either end of the shunt that uh, all the power for the car flows through that. But then also we have on the sides two little screws and those have two smaller wires coming off of those. Those go to the ammeter on the dashboard. It's really uh, just a, a difference in resistance or a difference in voltage that makes the ammeter sweep by. So we're not bringing all the power of the car up into the da dashboard. We're just uh, taking a little piece of it out the side to run the ammeter. One last thing that I have in here is simply an additional 12 volt fuse panel. Uh, for any other needs on the car that I need some power for, instead of trying to find a lot of different places to tap the 12 volt power off of, and then if a fuse blows, I have no clue what fuse to replace. Um, I just added a separate little circuit board in here that is a, a 12 volt fuse box. And right now this is running power to the dashboard computer. And then anything else that I need to add, I've got a spot for a 12 volt source. Another nice thing about this box here is it's completely weatherproof. In the end where the all the power connections come in and out that's even gasketed so water can't get through that way the lid is gasketed and it closes securely with latches which could even be locked if you'd like